Welcome to the channel. My name is Brock Ashby. I'm an online personal trainer, body transformation coach of many people internationally, worldwide. I also have a personal training studio here in Sydney. The Team Brock Ashby Body Court is where we're filming this. And today I'm going to be breaking down a question that I got asked in my Instagram stories, which is, what are your thoughts on training to failure, but only going to failure on the last set? So if you're interested in training and getting gains and getting stronger, this video is going to be awesome for you. So before we kind of dive in, there are a few things that we need to address and define beforehand. So training to failure and training close to failure. We need to define these and we also need to kind of understand what the research says about these. So training to failure is pretty self-explanatory. It's lifting the weight that you're doing on an exercise until you literally cannot perform a complete rep anymore. So if you're doing bench press and you're pushing, 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 and you think you're going to get to the top and then it starts coming back down, you've reached failure. So that is failure. Just when you literally cannot push anymore. Training close to failure though is different and there's ways we can measure it. So we have something called reps and reserve, RIR, or we have something that we can also use, which is RPE or rate of perceived exertion. So if we look at the reps and reserve model, what this is, is it's measured in like any number above zero. So zero reps and reserve is complete failure. So if you want to look at reps and reserve as reps left in the gas tank, then that's kind of how we can see it. So zero reps and reserve is training to complete failure. One rep and reserve is training until you only have one rep left in the gas tank. So you need to understand where that line is. So if I'm doing bench press and I finish it and I rack it, and then someone pulls a gun to my head and says, do one more rep. If I could only do one more rep and then I try and do a second, but I fail, that is one rep in reserve completely. So two reps in reserve is going to be one away from that. And three reps in reserve is going to be if someone comes up, puts a gun to my head and says, do three more reps. And I just get three. I go for my fourth and I fail. That is a honest, true, genuine three reps in reserve. So that's how we measure that. RPE or rate of perceived exertion is a general and easier to understand seven out of 10, eight out of 10, nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 is training to complete muscular failure, no reps left in the gas tank, just like zero reps in reserve. Nine out of 10 intensity is like training at 90%. It's a bit hard to gauge though. So what I like to do is kind of tie them to reps in reserve. So this is how I educate my clients in Team Brock Ashby. We have zero reps in reserve, which is 10 out of 10 RPE. We have one rep in reserve, which is nine out of 10 RPE. We have two reps in reserve, which is eight out of 10. And then three reps in reserve is seven out of 10. You still following me? So they kind of tie in and it depends on what way you want to think and what works better in your mind. But these are ways to educate us on training to complete failure or training close to failure. So what does the research say about it? With the research, training close to failure is potentially better than training to failure. It's context dependent, obviously, but if we train to failure, it's massively taxing on the body. Doing a squat, maybe that's not the best example. Doing a leg press until your legs literally shake and give way is taxing. That's full on. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it's not fun. Doing a squat, and I've done this quite a few times, like squat until you can't get back up and you have to throw the weight off your back. It's not the safest, first of all. That's why I thought it was a bad example. But that takes the absolute gas out of you. But if you go with one rep in reserve, so you do a squat, you finish the rep and you go, I could probably do one more, but I'm just going to finish there. That gives you almost the exact same hypertrophy response than going to complete failure. But it saves you on the amount of energy that it costs you and the amount of injury risk that you get. So that's why I think training close to failure is a very good idea. Training to failure can also be good because it is, look, it is better than training close to failure in terms of the signal that you're sending the muscles, 
but you do get increased soreness, increased potential to injure yourself, uh, increased fatigue and all that kind of stuff. So it's just something that you have to take um, and kind of use every now and then. Right. So moving on, that's kind of like what the research says about training to failure. It's a great idea, but it can be taxing on your body. Training close to failure is a good idea. It may be a slightly less strong stimulus to build muscle, but all round, in terms of injury risk and all that kind of stuff, it is a bit safer and better long term as a sustainable approach to lifting weight and getting jacked. I do want to introduce, secondly, this concept of involuntary and voluntary reps. So when we look at voluntary reps, these are reps that go up without a fight. So a voluntary rep is where just everything's working as we want it to be, like a volunteer coming to help. So if we're doing reps of eight sets of dumbbell chest press, sorry, eight reps of dumbbell chest press, and they all go up at the tempo that they're designed for, so two seconds down, one up. They are one sec, uh, sorry, one, two, and push. One, two, and push. And all the reps are that same speed. Those are all voluntary reps. But what we want to build muscle and a good signal to build muscle is going to be these things called involuntary reps, where the muscles are involuntary needing to help. And you're kind of calling on more muscle fibers to lift the weight because the rep slows down. So let's say we're doing eight reps again, and five of those reps are one, two, up. One, two, up, they're voluntary. But then the last three reps, you go one, two, and it's not just up, it's uh, up, like that. And then you go down for seven, and you're uh, up. And then you go eight, and it's even slower, it's even slower, it's kind of like a three second up. Even though you haven't followed the tempo, the intent was to get two seconds down, one up, but the actual application of the rep coming up was a lot slower. That means that our muscles have kind of involuntarily had to call on more muscle fibers to lift the weight. These are the ones that we want. And that's why um, to answer this question very soon, if we don't have these involuntary reps training close to failure where we have these reps coming in and calling on more muscle fibers to lift the weights, we're not training hard enough to build muscle. So. If we were to only train to failure on the final set, we may not get enough involuntary reps to build as much muscle as possible in our workouts. So it, it, it kind of depends how far away we're training from failure on those other sets leading up to the final set. So obviously if you're training to failure on that final set, that final set is going to be very uh, hypertrophic or it's gonna have high muscle building potential. But if these other sets that you're doing leading up to that final set are too far away from failure, then you're potentially only going to have one really good muscle building set. And that's a bit of a letdown. If you're in the gym doing four sets of chest press, four sets of lat pull down, chin ups, bent over row, bicep curls, and only one of those sets is going to build you muscle, it's going to feel like a bit of a waste of time. So I don't think that's a very good strategy in terms of going into the gym to try and build as much muscle as possible. In terms of getting strong, it could be a viable strategy because getting stronger is different to getting as jacked as possible. Strength training is different to bodybuilding, slightly. They do have crossover, but ultimately we can get stronger by training a little bit further away from failure. But to build muscle, we do really need to get close to it. So this is how I like to look at training to failure. Instead of reserving it for the last set, I actually like to program failure week to week. So when I coach people, and what I recommend for yourself as well, is to go through certain programs. And programs to me are four weeks long. We have week one, two, three, and four. With week one, it's a new program. You may be facing new exercises, you may be facing a new tempo, new number of sets, uh, new number of reps, so instead of doing four, you might be doing eight. Instead of doing eight, you could be doing two. This first week of the program is generally a bit of feeling it out if you're really following it. So with week one, I like to tie that to three reps in reserve or training at a seven out of 10 intensity. This doesn't mean you train like a pussy, excuse my French. You're not going to the gym and just dicking around and going, oh yeah, this week doesn't really count. It still counts because the research says if we train at three reps in reserve, we can still build muscle. If we train at five reps in reserve or higher, that's a pretty good sign that we're not training hard enough. We're not giving our muscles a strong enough signal to build. So if, if I was to do a set 
and someone held a gun to my head and was like, hey, do five more reps. And I did seven. I'm not training hard enough. Even if I got five, I'm not training hard enough. We need to get three or less. So with week one, we train at a seven out of 10 or three reps in reserve intensity. Then with week two, now that we're getting more familiar with the program, we've got one week under our belt. We've discovered the exercises, the reps, the tempo, the number of sets, all that type of stuff. Now we can start increasing the intensity. And as I said, intensity is measured with reps in reserve and rate of perceived exertion. So we go from three reps in reserve or seven out of 10 into week two, we do two reps in reserve or eight out of 10. And then with week three, we keep applying a press of, uh, progressive overload and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And we get to one rep in reserve or nine out of 10 intensity. And then on that final week, we're going balls to the wall. We're going 10 out of 10 intensity, zero reps in reserve. So this doesn't mean in week one, two, and three, we're not building any muscle because going by the research and going by anecdotal experience too, we are still training hard enough to get that response. But in that final week, we are lifting and probably saving all our personal bests in that week three to four, because this is where we're going to complete failure. We're lifting weights that we haven't before. We're really putting, you know, more, more weights on the bar. We're putting the pin down lower on the cable machine and lifting more weights. So this means that last week of the program is going to be very, very, very fatiguing. Um, but then when we start a new program on the back of that, so weeks one to four are done, then weeks uh, one to four of the next program, we start that new cycle again. So even though we smashed ourselves in that final week, our energy is going to be pretty low. We're going to be pretty fatigued. But now we have three reps in reserve of the next program that we're going to follow. So that's going to be not a deload week, but it's going to be at a lower intensity than our previous week. So it will give us time to better recover, to better perform, and then get set up for that week three and four of this program where we can really lift heavier weights and get stronger again. So this is the way that I like to look at training to failure. If you reserve it for the last set of each exercise, I feel like potentially only the final set <clears throat> is going to be hypertrophic. If those sets before the last are uh, one rep and reserve, two rep and reserve, three rep and reserve, that's still going to be uh, muscle building. So there is that as well. But it's just that you're going to have to measure that each time. And that's going to be difficult measuring it set to set. I find it easier to measure intensity week to week as opposed to set to set. And it might be too fidgety to kind of figure all that stuff out. Also, one thing before I leave, a little caveat, warm up sets are not working sets. So if you're going, oh, my last set to failure is going to be uh, 60 kilos on the bench press for 20 reps. If you're warming up and doing the bar for 20 reps and then you're doing 30 kilos for 20 reps and then you're doing 40 kilos uh, for 10 reps and then 50 for eight and then you do your 60 for 20, those sets don't count as working sets. So keep that in mind. If you're just warming up to do one set of failure, then you're only doing one real working set. So you need to differentiate warm-up sets versus workout sets. Because if you're just warming up to do one set of failure, that's not really going to be enough volume for your muscle to see growth. Hopefully that helps. That's the video. If you are wondering about training and how you can get better results, if you haven't been seeing uh, good results from doing it on your own, I do coach people internationally, as I said at the start of the video. So, you know, whether you're based in America, Europe, Asia, New Zealand, Africa, anywhere, I do coach people all around the world. The link is in description, teambrockashby.com. Uh, we run everything through a coaching app, which is really easy to use. Uh, if you're not up to coaching yet, but you want to find out how many calories you want to, uh, or you need for your goals, I have the uh, link to my free calorie calculator in the description. And if you want another video of mine with more education such as this or workout videos or anything like that, YouTube's already sorted it out for you. This one's gonna be the best one for you. Check it out and I'll see you in the next video.